The nonprofit Voices for Children has served more than 3,600 children across San Diego and Riverside counties in 2020, and they are hosting a real world speakers panel Tuesday, June 28th. Uh, June 28th, and here to discuss more is uh, Kelly Ka Cape, uh, excuse me, Kelly Douglas from uh, Voices for Children, along with former San Diego Padres infielder Mark Loretta. And uh, Kelly, Mark, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And Kelly, I want to start start with you. If you can simply sort of explain exactly the work it is that you all do. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having us this morning. Voices for Children is the nonprofit organization that is designated by the Superior Courts in San Diego and Riverside to recruit, train, and support court-appointed special advocate volunteers. We call them CASAs. So CASAs are very special community volunteers who are matched with either a child or a sibling group that's been removed from their home due to abuse and neglect and have entered the foster care system. So what our CASAs do is our CASAs advocate for the children for the duration of, their of the time that they're in the foster care system to make sure they have access to the resources that they need to thrive and to find stability. But one thing that's really special about our CASAs is that for many of the kids that we serve, their CASA ends up becoming the most consistent presence in their life. So wow. we're really grateful to have the chance to support some amazing community volunteers who are making a difference in the lives of the children. And Mark, uh, tell us a little bit about kind of your journey here with with uh, with voices and sort of how it is that you became involved as well too. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks for having us. I I was uh, I became a CASA in 2016. I found out about Voices for Children through another foundation. Uh, they came and presented, and, and they had uh, a, a sweet gal who had been in the foster program and had a, had a CASA present to us. And um, I went through the training program. It's about a 35-hour program. You learn all kinds of things about the court and the foster care program. And I think the CASAs fill that role. There's, there's about 3,700, as you mentioned, uh, foster kids. And, and so, you know, uh, the judges and the, um, uh, you know, the social workers, they're so overwhelmed with, with what's going on that the CASAs fill that void of being really specific to their cases and advocating for these kids on what they really need. And, and Kelly, when, when you hear about someone, you know, like Mark also getting involved and, and for all the people that are involved, what, what is sort of the number one thing that you think that they experience that kind of keeps them coming back, if you will? Well, our, our CASAs, yeah. first of all, make an 18-month an commitment at a minimum to yeah. be with their kids. And I think what really drives the volunteers that we support is the, the, the desire to really be that consistent presence when, when other people in their lives are coming in and out to be there. And so we're really grateful too that we have many CASAs who when their cases close, they choose to take on another one because they've really seen the difference that it can make when you have an individual who can he give the attention to the children that they need mm -hmm. and then understand their needs and then go and advocate for them in court, in schools, in healthcare settings, in the communities. So I think that's what really brings them back is they see that power of that human relationship and that connection and that's a consistent adult presence in their life. And then of course that we have this panel coming up that'll, that'll be here coming up yep. on, on the 28th and what is it that, that folks can expect uh, for those that'll be in attendance? So we, uh, the Real Word panel is a speaker's panel comprised of older and former foster youth who talk about their experiences in foster care and their impact of their CASAs yeah. like Mark. Um, and so we're gonna have the chance to hear a little bit about Mark and his experience as a CASA. We're so grateful to support CASAs like him. Yeah. And then we will have four amazing young men who will uh, be part of a moderated discussion and they will talk in a very authentic and heartfelt and genuine way about what their experiences were as, as children in the foster care system and the impact that the, their CASA had on their life. And Mark, I mean, for you, was there was there anything that you maybe thought or did not account for prior to being a CASA that at the end of, at, at the time of you serving as a CASA there, that you that you found out about or that you kind of really relished and, and kind of looked back upon fondly? Yeah, as Kelly said, just making this connection with these kids yeah. who have, you know, really their lives are kind of starting out behind the eight ball, right? They've been either abused or neglected uh, and taken out of their, of their homes. Uh, so to provide that stability, uh, is, is amazing. It, it's not an easy thing to do, honestly, because there's some difficulties in, with the kids, but it's a very, very rewarding thing to do and, and, and enjoyed it very much. And for the people that maybe want to learn a little bit more, if, if, if it is something that they would like to do to get involved, where can they go to find out a little bit more about supporting? To learn more about becoming a CASA, you can check us out on our website at www.speakupnow.org. 
There's a host of information there. It starts with attending an information session. We do need more CASA volunteers. And what, what the biggest uh, requirement is to be a CASA is to have a heart for service of children. Yeah. And so if any of your viewers are interested in learning more, we encourage them to check us out. Okay, well, Mark Kelly, thank you guys so much for joining us this morning and, again, spreading a really important message. So thank you guys again, and best of luck. Thank, thank you, you, Chris. Thanks,